started? I'll get started. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. I'm Scott Peets. I'm the president of Seeds of Sustainability. And uh, today I'm going to do a workshop kind of discussion, a little bit of facts about uh, raw milk and the benefits and kind of like the, the crap that everybody gets told about raw milk, but it's not really uh, backed up by the research. Um, so we have pasteurized milk is kind of like what's what everybody has available unless you go to a visit a farm that sells raw milk. Um, luckily in our state in Massachusetts you can actually buy raw milk even from the dairy there's some states like Rhode Island you can't even buy raw milk for human consumption and um, there's other states where it, yeah it's like that it's completely illegal and some I think California is one of the only ones that you could actually go to a retail store and buy raw milk. Um, one of the reasons why we have pasteurized milk, and I, I got all kinds of statistics here and stuff like that, and uh, numbers and things that have happened. Um, but the story, the story goes is like, um, so raw milk was a staple. Every, you know, throughout time, that's everybody that drank some kind of animal milk, it was always raw, it wasn't never pasteurized. And then in, um, in 19, I mean 1810, and uh, the 1800s and stuff, what happened is uh, the only two things in the U.S. that were like the, the main things people drank was milk and whiskey. So when the War of 1812 happened, um, the spirits that were coming, getting imported from Europe stopped and it ran dry. So all the people in the United States that had distilleries are like, oh, we gotta, we gotta capitalize on this. We gotta stop building more distilleries. So that's what they did. So some genius, that's sarcasm, <laughs> decided, well, they have a spent, spent grains and we could feed that to our cattle. Let's, let's put all our cattle side by side with distilleries or around distilleries close by in these cities, basically creating the first CAFOs, uh, confinement feeding operations for animals. And so they kept them in these, you know, in these cities, in the city, in these tight quarters with crap, manure everywhere. And they fed them these hot, um, rank uh, leftovers from the spirit making. So bad conditions, Improper food because cows are designed to, to they're designed to eat grass, not grain, which is a whole different subject, but it has to do with this. So those two conditions plus the workers are just they were kind of they didn't care about cleanliness. They were just doing their thing, and so all three of those things, their milk that they produced was actually like a grayish, like a, a really grayish like dark color it wasn't it was it was like a bluish color it wasn't even milk it wasn't yellow or or white it was a, it looked gross so what they did is they enriched it with flour flour or chalk to make it look like it was white so they started giving this to families and stuff and unfortunately children and stuff started dying from it because all these bad conditions and bad milk were just harboring all these diseases and these bad bacterias, and because it wasn't even a quality milk, it couldn't fight any of those things anyway. So, um, you know, the children's deaths and all that by 1870 had skyrocketed, insane. Um, so there was two people around that time, um, Henry Coit, he's a, he was a doctor, and um, so he proposed that he wanted to have milk certified so you could still get raw milk, but he wanted it to be certified in, from a good, a good source. He didn't want you to get milk, uncertified milk from these nasty dairies that were in the cities that were attached to distilleries. So he pushed for a commission to oversee that and certify milk. And he, he succeeded. Unfortunately, he lost his son to actually, he actually lost one of his kids to contaminated milk. And then um, Nathan Stratus, he's a, 
He was from New York, and he actually made a lot of money. He was a co-owner of, of Macy's. Started Macy's, I guess, a long time ago. So he used a lot of his money. He also lost a child to contaminated milk, but he believed the only good milk was pasteurized milk. So pasteurization was around, but it wasn't really used for milk. And then he pushed, and he used as much money as he, he, he sponsored and used a lot of his money to get uh, pasteurized milk out there. And he's like milk depots and made low cost pasteurized milk. So he helped that. So for a long time, pasteurized milk and raw milk was sold pretty much side by side, this certified raw milk. So you can go and choose whatever you want. Um, then all of a sudden, in the um, mid-40s, and in 1944, uh, there was a smear campaign uh, that was launched. All these magazine articles, these bogus mar magazine articles and all the newspaper articles that slam raw milk is bad for you. Because now it became an industry and people started seeing that this is, you know, this is a money-making thing and you can do these CAFO type ideas, but as long as you pasteurize it, it would, it would save our butts. We didn't have to worry about all these pathogens, even though that was unhealthy animals or unhealthy milk. So it blew up from there, and then eventually our government and uh, other medical professional, uh, professionals, swayed by all the corporate dollars and the lies, um, started making it harder and harder for people to get raw milk. And eventually illegal in, like I said, a lot of states. And um, so that's kind of where we're at now. I mean, uh, there's a lot of organizations that are fighting for raw milk to be available, or at least a choice. You know, you don't have to force anybody to drink it. And not necessarily saying, let's get rid of pasteurization or pasteurized milk, but let the people that want raw milk get raw milk. Um, so some of the, so the FDA, if you look at the FDA's website and the CDC, uh, Center for Disease Control, if you look at what they say about raw milk, I mean, you'd probably think you'd explode if you took a sip of it. <laughs> so, I mean, they, they, they have published other stuff, they have published stuff saying how high of a risk food it is and all this stuff, but a lot of their, or a lot of their research actually is not, it's not, it doesn't back what they say. So they'll say, oh, it does X, Y, Z. And then if you look through the research, like actually look through the research, it doesn't really support that. And of course, a lot of their questions that they ask are not the right questions. It's the questions that are gonna get the answers that they wanna portray anyway. Um, I'm not gonna say that raw milk doesn't have a risk, but every food does. Any food has a risk. Um, even in Massachusetts, you can look it up, there's cases of, um, so there's like three main bacteria that ha milk has a problem with, and that's uh, E. coli, salmonella, and listeria. So most of the time, they don't find cases of listeria in pasteurized milk, but in Massachusetts alone, we had a huge outbreak with listeria in our in a dairy that was in um, like Central Mass, I, f I don't know the name of it, but um, they actually had a big outbreak where a lot of people got sick and so a couple of people passed away from it, from pasteurized milk. So, and from the research that I've seen is that regardless pasteurized or, or raw milk, it's less than 1%, very low, one, less than 1% of people that ever get sick from, from drinking milk, regardless if it's pasteurized or not. Um, the benefits of it not being pasteurized is all the, these things have, uh, raw milk has living uh, live bacteria in it and it's always moving and that's what pasteurization is, kills all that stuff, the good and the bad. With the living bacteria in raw milk helps fight off if there is any bad disease and it doesn't happen all the time but it can handle a certain percentage of, of these these bad bacteria, and it'll it'll fight it off any, naturally, and plus it has a lot of antibiotics and stuff like that that help uh, help fight off the the negative bacteria. Um, 
pasteurized cow milk is actually the number one allergic food in this country. It's associated with uh, a number of si symptoms and illnesses. Diarrhea, cramps, bloating, gas, gastrointestinal bleeding, iron deficiency, anemia, skin rashes, allergies, colic in infants, osteoporosis, increased tooth decay, arthritis, increased tooth decay, growth problems in children, heart disease, cancer, um, acne, reoccur reoccurrent air infections in children, type 1 diabetes, infertility, leukemia, autism, and you know, if you, you could look up all the, there's a lot of research that have done that shows that pasteurized milk has done a lot of that, uh, like helped and a lot of those things, it doesn't necessarily cause it, but it definitely, you know, it doesn't help. Um, and, and raw milk, on the other hand, ha is not associated with any of those problems that I just listed. And, uh, and people that even say they're allergic to pasteurized milk or are lactose intolerant, sometimes um, if they try drinking raw milk, they won't have any issues with it at all. So, you know, if anybody here is, if you lactose intolerant, sometimes try and drink, trying to drink raw milk, it'll be different. Um, you'll have a different um, response. Um, another thing that raw milk, because of all the bacteria, so when it's pasteurized, it becomes, because it loses a lot of the enzymes, which it's filled with, I have some statistics here, I'll, I'm sure I'll go through. But um, it has a lot of enzymes. So once you pasteurize it, you ruin a lot of those enzymes that we need to help digest our food. So a lot of times it doesn't go through our whole system. With the, with the raw milk, it gets to go, it gets digested a lot easier. And it'll go into, you know, completely through your stomach. And then all those enzymes work within your body to make you healthier and increase your it's said to increase your uh, immune system and some other stuff. Um, I made notes, but they're kind of all over the place. Um, so some of the so when I'm talking about raw milk too, I'm also talking about raw milk that comes from gra grass-fed cows. So if you're looking to get raw milk, the best thing to do is to look at the dairy that you're getting it from, making sure the conditions are clean, um, that they're you know usually grass-fed because that's what cows are designed to eat. So a healthier cow is going to produce healthier milk. Um, so also, I don't know if anybody knows this, but milk is raw milk from a grass-fed cow is actually complete food. You could actually live for years off of just drinking milk, raw cow's milk. It has, it has uh, we, we need eight proteins. Oh, we need 20 to 22 proteins, but we need eight to come from other foods, our diet, at least eight. And milk has all eight of those pro, uh, proteins. Also, um, like I said, there was all those enzymes and all that other stuff that we need but it's actually a complete but once you pasteurize it you're going to kill all that stuff you're not going to be able to digest it so you kind of just lost the whole complete food thing I'm not saying that anybody wants to just live off milk but it's possible um, so milk has like I said the proteins they eat essential amino acids that's what I meant the amino acids not proteins but uh, so we need 20 to 22 amino acids, which make up a protein. And milk has all eight amino acids. Um, it also has a uh, lactoferrin. It's an iron binding protein. It has numerous beneficial properties. Uh, imp it improves your absorption of iron. And, it's anti, and it has anti-cancer properties and anti-microbial 
action against several species of bacteria responsible for dental decay. Um, so, um, so a lot of these uh, properties that in the proteins and stuff in the milk has these antibiotics, antibiotics that um, help with asthma. And so once you once you pasteurize it, you kill a lot of those. So even like we get all these diseases and problems, and some of it's because we drink pasteurized milk that doesn't give us these these antibiotics that we need to to grow a, a better immune system. Um, the carbohydrates, like I was saying, lactose. So if you're lactose intolerant. Um, Like uh, enough. so some of the fats is a fat called uh, CCK. I don't, I don't know exactly what it means, but it's a hormone secret. It's actually a sec hormone secreted by our stomach lining, boost boosting the production and secretion of digestive enzymes. And so it, that helps us tell us that we've eaten enough. So once you once you remove that trigger, then the non-fat, and then you, so you do, you buy like 2% uh, or skimmed milk, you kind of remove that trigger, and, um, and then it'll contribute to overeating, and of course that helps with, uh, you know, diabetes and obesity and stuff like that. Um, Uh, and there's another uh, fat, CLA. Uh, it's conjugated linoleic acid. It's produced from the fats, and uh, it's abundant in, in milk from grass-fed cows. And it's pretty heavily, heavily studied. And then I guess it's polyunsaturated omega-6 fatty acids with uh, and it has a lot of promising health benefits. Uh, it r raises your metabolic rate, helps remove abdominal fat, boosts muscle growth, reduces resistance to insulin, strengthens the immune system, and lowers food allergy reactions. And uh, grass-fed grass -fed raw milk actually has three to five times more CLA in it, so it, that one acid that helps do a lot of things is is more abundant in raw milk. Uh, the vitamins uh, there's two there's water and fat soluble vitamins that that contribute to our health. Raw milk has all of them, and they're all available for our for our body to use. Uh, minerals, enzymes, like I was talking about. It does have cholesterol, three milligrams of cholesterol per gram. Um, something that we need, and why not? It said, you know, it said, why not let raw milk be one source? So, uh, beneficial bacteria is also in raw milk. So, self-protective properties, and. Um, with, with milk too, with most foods as they age, they get worse, so they go bad. With milk, it actually gets better. So the more it like sours and ferments and stuff, which we make cheese and yogurts and stuff, all, those, all that process it actually gets, gets better. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like all my notes I've been going through, but anyway. But. Um, so yeah, with the raw, like I've been drinking raw milk for over a year now, um, exclusively. I mean, I've had maybe a few sips of pasteurized milk here and there, but mostly just raw milk. And like, I also hadn't gotten allergies until later in life. And so I was getting, I started getting allergies every year. 
And I could say this year I, I didn't get allergies at all. Not necessarily saying that it's just because I was drinking raw milk, but that and then change my diet to a more whole foods and a, a better, better diet. I'm assuming that had something to do with it. I mean, I haven't been sick, maybe a little cough here and there, but I think it, it has some kind of relevance to the food that we put in our body and how healthy we are. And to me, that's a little common sense, but some of us don't think about, it takes, you know, it takes a lot of stuff to, to think about it, but I don't know. And the raw milk, like I, like I was saying, all the properties of raw milk, they have the beneficial bacteria. You have this, like I said, you have this war going on. These bad bacteria want to infect this, and the, the raw milk has all the stuff in it that says, nope, it's not going to happen. And for me, I guess the risk that the FDA and the CDC will have you believe is, is worth taking it for me because, like I said, 1%, less than 1% of people ever get sick from a, a milk, never mind, you know, anything else. I don't know. <laughs> The FDA also says it's okay to smoke cigarettes as long as you follow the manufacturer's instructions. Yes. Well, I'm not sure that's quite the way science says cigarettes should be consumed. Um, the point about the bacteria is that beyond the nutritional level of, of raw milk is that um, you've heard about a lot about probiotic foods and people eat yogurt and and a few other things, that kept ears and, and different things because of the uh, beneficial bacteria in it. And raw milk is one of those foods that carries the beneficial bacteria that are put there by the cow to make its calf healthy, um, along with the enzymes and the antibodies and so on, so that this newborn calf, uh, who doesn't have much of a resistance to disease yet uh, built up, that takes time just like it does in humans. Uh, has is fed uh, essentially the immune system from the cow uh, supplements the uh, calves immune system so they can fight the disease and so the bacteria that are in the milk uh, go into our own uh, internal system and it turns out that you need to pick a lot more than a little bit of yogurt to keep that system healthy and it turns out that a lot of foods contribute to the probiotics of our intestinal tract and it's becoming more and more apparent that a lot of the long-term chronic diseases in people are based not so much on um, injury or trauma from the outside, but it's what's going on in their own gut with the biome that they carry. And that more and more treatments are coming out that um, are simply fortifying that biome in our own internal tract because you know most of you is not you. Most of you is other species. More you have ten to one cells, ten you have ten times as many cells in your body are non-human cells. You are an ecological community and you want to keep that community healthy and diverse to be healthy. They're beneficial for you. And <clears throat> milk is one of just one of many foods. I mean, virtually anything you eat raw, even if you pick a green bean and eat it, or a carrot, or a tomato, or an apple, and as long as you don't scrub it with bleach and, and sterilize it, you're eating the bacteria that were growing on the surface of it. <coughs> they get incorporated into your system and are beneficial for your system. And that's the way our system has evolved. It's evolved expecting that kind of food and expecting that health. Um, and when you cook the milk and pasteurize it and homogenize it, you're just taking away half the benefit of the food in, that was put there by nature. Nobody, I think, would argue that mother's milk for breastfeeding of babies is a bad thing. How many mothers pasteurize their milk before they give it to their infants? I've never heard of that. It might happen, but that would be a very unusual thing. It, it doesn't need to be pasteurized. It's prepared the way it's supposed to be consumed. 
and assuming the handling of it, like you say, there's been issues with people who didn't understand hygiene or didn't care about hygiene who can, can contaminate it, but that can, can they can contaminate your salads and your hamburgers just as quickly as they can your milk. So you have to be conscious and aware of where you're getting your food from and uh, make sure that if you're buying whatever you're buying, whether it's vegetables or meat or dairy, you're buying it from a place that is careful in the way they handle the food so that it doesn't get contaminated accidentally uh, by whatever they might have. So that's nothing new. And the other point with the bacteria is that, as I mentioned, how many people have heard of a raw milk recall? How many people have ever heard of a ground meat recall? Uh, yeah, all of us, yeah. They, they recall thousands of tons of ground meat which are sold freely in fast food joints and supermarkets and nobody gives it a thought. They go right back the next day and buy some more. And nobody thinks, oh, wait a minute, that stuff could be dangerous. And yet there's this bugaboo about raw milk, the stigma that for some reason people have got that it's unsafe. And I've never heard of anybody getting sick from raw milk. No. Never. I mean, I'm sure people have, especially back, you know, 100 years ago when people didn't wash their hands before they handled things. But it's unheard of. It's just unheard of. I've been drinking raw milk for a couple hundred years at least. <laughs> and it's, hey, I'm sorry, it just doesn't make you sick. It's, yeah. just, it, it's and it tastes, I, the thing that's nice about it too is I can tell what the cows have been eating by the flavor of the milk because it actually has a flavor. Yeah. And come springtime when the cows leave the barn and stop eating hay and head out to the green pastures in the spring uh, green, you can tell, ah, oh, the cows have been out in the pasture this week because the milk flavor picks up yeah. and changes. It actually reflects what they're eating. And they're not just eating grain and corn and Purina cow food. They're actually eating varieties of natural foods in their diet. So. It's just a better, a better way to get it. And I'm not saying everybody should drink milk. Obviously, some people have problems with milk. Uh, they generally don't have problems with homogenized pasteurized milk. My son has an allergy to milk. Not an intolerance, but an allergy. But that's to pasteurized homogenized milk, not to raw whole milk. And uh, the intolerance is the same issue. People have a problem because, probably because of the homogenation. It breaks up the fat globules so small that they're digested in a very quick way, and that causes an overload on the system in some people. And uh, the homogenation is, a, is an issue. Uh, whereas with raw milk, of course, you, when you bring it home, you let it sit for a couple hours, the cream all comes to the top, which is nice if you happen to be ready to have some coffee, because then you just pour off the top. And you've got solid cream. just a much nicer food for people who want to have some milk. Has anybody heard anything about raw milk? The dangers or pauses about it? No, I Questions? have a question about that. Sure. Do you know or about any study that they make for a specific people or person that have, for example, asthma and using raw milk help that person to cure something like that? Um, I can't cite specific a specific story, but I have heard that people have um, a lot of their uh, reactions have lessened at least lessened when they have started drinking raw milk. And the same thing with autism, like children with autism uh, and people and kids that get like seizures and stuff like that. Once they start um, drinking raw milk and stuff like that, it starts lessening. I'm not sure if anybody has been specifically cured but it definitely lessens the like those people that ha I think I was reading a case where a kid was having seizures like you know like 10 a day and then as they started drinking raw milk it became like you know a couple of week you know and just kept getting lower and lower and it's all because because of the bacteria and the the way they digest it and just like I said it, suppr it suppresses 
screwing up our internal biological communities. And um, the issue with asthma, I know, is, is of course related to inflammation. And people have an inflammatory reaction to pasteurized milk. Well, for those people who can't drink it or have problems with it, uh, it's an inflammatory reaction. It's a very irritating sort of product because of the cooking and the breaking up of the fat, whereas that doesn't happen with, with raw milk. But just to give you an example, it's, it's a little bit different issue, but how important the internal biology is. Um, they've raised uh, test animals that will, of the same species, these were rats, so they're not here. Some rats in the family just chronically are obese, and some rats in the same family are normal and healthy. And they're, they have the same diet, the same environment, everything is the same, and yet some members of the family, of the rat family, just seem to be fat, no matter what, you know, they, they live the same as their brothers and sisters. They took some of the feces from the healthy rats and put it in the food of the fat rats. So in other words, what they were doing was inoculating the fat rats with the bacteria of the thin rats. The fat rats immediately lost weight and became healthy like their brothers and sisters. Well, today, obese people are getting a capsule. And it is a capsule of human feces, bacteria, concentrated from healthy, thin people. And they're taking those capsules. They're not changing their diet, not changing their exercise, not changing anything at all. And they're losing weight. And it turns out that a lot of their obesity problems is caused by this imbalance that they have in their of bacteria. So it's the, the point is, it's a very important factor in our health. It really, it affects things that you wouldn't, intuitively, you wouldn't think that would make a big, you know, that would change anything. And yet it does. Because of the way you digest and absorb your food. It's, it's controlled by those organisms inside you. And of course, milk is just one of those things that keeps it healthy, keeps it fulfilled, keeps it diverse. How long I can have that milk in the fridge as soon as I take it from the cow? Um, usually a week and a half, two weeks. Two weeks. You can freeze it. Yeah. People have freeze frozen it. For weeks. Some people say, that, most people, they have tested to see if it had changed much, and most people say it, has, it doesn't really change much. Sometimes the taste might be a little bit different after you thaw it out, if you freeze it. But I would also say if, if you have a dairy that's not too far from you, it's better just to get fresh milk. I get, I get my milk once a week, so I, I get half gallons instead of gallons, and I'll get a uh, half gallon every, every week, usually. With that problem that we have to get raw milk, how we, how we could be, or how we could reach that milk because it has to be like a black market. <laughs> that's almost like a black market. That's, that's, that's a, yeah. Well, how, um, how we, because not everybody knows about that. I got, when I'm going to, I got to, some websites on there for farms. There's, you can go to NOFA Mass if you take this. See, like this, these two are the two farms that are closest to here. And then NOFA will, has a whole list of everybody throughout the state um, that sells raw milk. There and there's a lot of dairies. dairies sell raw milk. And you could only get it from the dairy. You can't buy it from a store or anything else. There's all kinds of crazy laws. Like they don't supposed to like advertise. They can advertise that they have it at their farm. They can't put like, I don't, I don't think they're supposed to put like ads out, right? As, I don't know. This, there's some kind of weird like advertising law that they can't. The, the American Dairy Council has their claws into this industry very heavily. Yeah. They're allowing it so they can say that it's legal and they're not prohibiting it. But they're making it so inconvenient for both the farmer and the consumer that 
it discourages people from because it you know it's not convenient for people to have to go to a farm to buy their milk. It's that's inconvenient for a lot of people. Yeah. Some people just can't do that. And, and um, but they can still say no, it's legal. It's legal. You can get it. You can buy all you want. And they regular they they test it regularly, like a lot. So sometimes you could even ask the farmer if you really want to see their bacteria counts. And sometimes they'll be able to provide you with how much bacteria is or if they've found like, you know, more salmonella on, in a certain batch or anything like that. So they get tested and they have to test. I think some states, and I'm not sure about Massachusetts, how often they have to test. But from what I've read that a lot of them are every week, once a week, they have to at least test all the bacteria counts. But, but uh, talking about all the things that I, uh, that I heard about raw milk, uh, because somebody told me, oh, that person, that farmer has raw milk, you can buy from, from there, but don't say anything. Oh. I don't understand if I go to your farm to buy raw milk, if I'm going to hurt you, but I have a problem on you too. Yeah. What I could do? It, it well, you might be finding people that are not licensed to sell raw milk, so they don't want you to tell everybody because they don't want to go through that process. Again, that's... These people have license to... Yeah, those people, there, there are people that are licensed to sell raw milk and they could sell it legally, but you know, they, they as long as they fulfill all the, uh, you know, the requirements by the state and uh, the Board of Health and the local Board of Health as well. Um, but there are people that will sell you raw milk because they produce it and they produce a lot. They'll be like, oh, I'll sell you some. They're not licensed, but that's on you to make that decision. Do you trust mm -hmm. that they're keeping everything clean and things like that, you know? It's the same thing in Rhode Island. Legally, you can't get, you know, you can't get raw milk for human consumption, but you could buy it for pet food. You, know, you can buy it for your cat or to feed to pigs as whey or anything like that. So you can... You can purchase raw milk, but you can't use it for human consumption. And that's just Rhode Island laws, but a lot of people will buy it and drink it anyway. It just, um, as long as you trust the source, I'm not going to tell you not to, you know, get whatever you can if you trust the source, but a licensed dairy has everything in place, everything's stainless steel, everything's tested. And they have, they have restrictions for raw milk producers. I mean, they have to have the right kind of equipment, they have to have the right kind of sanitation. They have to show that they're using the right kind of cleaners for all the equipment and for the cows and for their hands. The milk, once it's once the cow is milked, it has to be, they have a certain number of minutes that it has to be dropped to a, a minimum temperature. I'm sorry, a maximum temperature. It has to be refrigerated rapidly mm -hmm. uh, as raw milk, as any milk does. Yeah. Uh, they, they have to have a way to chill it very quickly and they have to have a way of packaging it properly. Um, so I mean, they're they're not just you know wildcats out there doing whatever they want. They're they are they are still following uh, basic health and sanitation processes, and, um, and most of them are very con any of that I know are very conscientious about it because the last thing they want is to have problems with some inspector or state or a customer because that would that would wipe them out if if they ever had any problems they would be done. They, they just wouldn't be able. To. By the way, people who think they've never had raw milk, anybody here who bought Vermont cheese of any kind, that's all raw milk. That's why Vermont cheese has the name brand that it does. It's raw milk cheese. That's why it has better flavor than <laughs> anybody else's cheese. Yep. I, I bought raw milk cheese in Whole Foods. I think Whole Foods. Or I yeah. Think. Yeah. So with the cheeses, they, they can... Oh, no. Say raw milk. Oh. They can sell raw milk cheese in the supermarkets, and they do. Yeah. Any of the Vermont cheeses that you see, like Grafton Village or Crowley, these are cheeses that are fifteen dollars a pound. These are not mass market cheeses, yeah. but they're very, very nice cheeses. They're all raw. Why yeah. Why? Why can they sell it is what she's asking. Why can they sell cheese but not the raw milk in the grocery stores? The cheese manufacturers have held together to, <laughs> to allow them to do it. It's, it's political lobbying. Who yeah. Got, who can push the it, that, that just shows an example of the BS. That just shows the, the level of BS that there is. Like, 
we'll say this is okay, but this is not. It's the same thing with the smoking. Oh, that don't don't do this, but it's okay to smoke. So they don't have to give a reason for it. Well, they'll justify it. They'll justify it any way they want, what? any any way they can. No, you can go to most of the cheese manufacturers and they usually have an observation and they'll have tours and you can watch how it goes through it. I've been to them and I've watched yeah. them make the cheese from dumping it out of the cans that come in or the truck that pumps it in, raw milk straight from the farm. And uh, you can watch the whole process. You can even stay there and watch the aging if you've got a few years. <laughs> But it's, it's, all, it's all done very, you know, it, it looks like a surgery room. They're all wearing, you know, protective gear and gloves and hats. And they're very, very careful in the way they handle everything. And I, how I could get the, the, the cream if I don't boil the milk? How can you get the cream? Yes, from raw milk. Some very self just cream. Yeah. I don't, I don't, like, I know the two that are around here, I don't think they sell just the cream, but there might be some, if you look up on NOFA or other websites that have, uh, they might, you might find a dairy that does that, but um, I know that those two, you have to buy the milk. But what, you know, if you're going to use the cream, you might as well drink the milk too. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, now you bought me with this, I'm going to try. <laughs> Yeah, well, I brought some so everybody could try some if you want. Oh, okay. Um, I got this from Pask Man uh, I'm sorry, Pine Hill Dairy. That's in Westport. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of these places, too, are all in the honest system. So you go up and you grab your milk and put your money in a box or a can. I would pass it out. Sure. People are getting hungry. I wouldn't use the bottom up there because its yeah. rim was against the table. I wouldn't do that either. But... We should serve it up. Look at how it comes in this weird container. Yeah. Um, Look at that. Yeah. That's Pine Hill. Um, I get mine from Pask Mansett. He's just a little bit closer. You don't have to shake it? Yeah. Oh. I shake it up. It, plus, it, I mean, it, it hasn't started to, to separate anyway. But the end of those milky cows, uh, they end for meat for the people, no? Huh? Oh, when, when, they, when, when they they're cow. done? Well, yeah. Probably. I'm not sure what they do with their cows. I'm sure that they sell it. I mean, uh, make it, put it into ground beef or something. Does anybody want some? Oh. The ones that I know that sell their old anybody, you want uh, milkers that are no longer viable, they're 15, 16, 18 years old. You want to know who buys them? Mm -hmm. Bologna companies, right? Mm -hmm. McDonald's. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay. A little bit. Yeah, well, if you, sure. if you see, if you, if you could see the color of this, it's not pure white. What's you know the best way to, because you say to check out the farm to make sure they have clean conditions, but if the farmer doesn't just want you walking around his property, what's the best way to, like, nicely ask so that you can Actually, check you it out? Milking just to walk and get there. there. Four or five in the morning, but four or four or five in the afternoon because it's going to be twice a day. Um, and ask if you could be there at milking time and watch because you're very interested in this lurch. And most of them will be very happy to have you. Walk, I mean, you can't just walk around. You might give me some for my husband. It's a site waiting for me. I'm going to show this. What they do every day, every day. What they have. I mean, to them, it's work. You know, and if somebody wants to come and. You brought me in. Watch them and appreciate what they do. Yeah. So I drink. These. My grandkids there. Come on in. There's you can touch the cow. Go ahead. Touch the cow. Thank you. 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 I appreciate it. Thank you. Um. Oh. Sorry.
Right. So the, these are from uh, Holst. This is from Holstein cows. Holstein. Holstein, right? No, not Holstein. Wait. Yeah. Jersey cows are Holsteins are black and white. Yeah. Yes. These are from Holsteins. Jerseys are tan, like sort of a brown butt color. And they have a higher butterfat. They have content. a higher butterfat. Well, that, and that, and they produce less milk, though. In West Park. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, it's this, if you go, if, this is $6 for a gallon. Um, Pasc is a little bit more. I think it's like eight, yeah, eight dollars again. But you can get a disposable bottle, too. I mean, you can get um, a glass bottle. So yeah, that's. Yeah, that's the one I get, the half gallon that's in a glass bottle, and you just return. You pay a $4.50 um, deposit, and then you, if you have a stop getting milk there, you can get your $4.50 back. But um, it's just so it, they could pay for the bottle if, if you stop going there and don't bring the bottle back. No, is it a clear bottle or just like a brown? Yeah, no, it's clear. Would you want like to take it or not? Because like beer, you wouldn't want. No, no, milk, it doesn't have a light reaction. Like no. Beer. Yeah. I can make my own uh, glass, glass, garden, no? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sometimes uh, some dairies will do that for you. They'll put it in a glass. They'll put it in a, they're supposed to put it in their approved, you know, their sanitized oh. thing. But sometimes if you talk to them, they'll, they'll refill a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> but um, like, so Pask Mancet has, has, um, They don't have Holstein. These, this is Holstein's, and the other one are uh, what's the other? Jersey. Jerseys, jerseys. So I like I like Passamansa too because of the Jersey cows, and they have a higher butterfat, and it just tastes a little bit sweeter. But it's a good milk. Nobody oh. asked about the fat, that content and whole milk. It's good. Would you say for a little bit more, what's the other thing for eight dollars you get what now? Pasteurized or? Oh no, it, the other place is just eight dollars a gallon. It's a little more expensive, but you could, you could at Pass Commands that they offer a half gallon that comes in a glass bottle. Oh, I see. So and that it's like four fifty. Yeah. And the other one is the jerseys that are sweeter, like a, a little bit sweeter. Like um, the latte take milk stuff that sweet or no? No, it's not like sweet as in like sugar sweet. Okay. I don't know. It's just it's 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 hard to you gotta taste it. You gotta taste it. It. More appealing to the tongue. Yeah, it's just like if you drink goat's milk. All different goats have different butterfat contents, and they're all gonna taste a little bit different. But it's just like Jerseys and Holsteins and. Goat's milk is thin like uh, like skim milk, right. and it tastes thin like yogurt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it has like goat cheese. Is that the same as like raw cow's milk? Like everything that you told us today about raw cow's milk, does that also apply to goat's milk? Yeah. I mean, um, you might get a little bit different of uh, tastes, and there might be some some other like nutrient stuff, as far as I know. Yeah. But goat's milk is probably even better for you than cow's milk. Yeah. Goat's milk is closer to human milk than cow's milk. And sheep's milk. No. I can tell you we can get it around here at Lee's Market. You're going to pay like three dollars a quart. And I it's, probably it's, pasteurized. Pasteurized. it's pasteurized. It's pasteurized. They ship it in from California. There's there's places you can get it, um, but there's no dairies that are open that that specifically sell it. Yep. No. <laughs> but you could. Yeah. You could find. Uh, you could find just goat. Just look out goat breeders. There'll, there'll be people that breed them that will. Uh, if you call them up and say, "Hey, I want some milk for my cat." All right, come get some. Yeah. For craft purposes, meaning like lotions and stuff, but yeah. if you drink it, they're not gonna know. Yeah. Again, it's like all the, the system. You just want to see how they do it. And like you were saying, you're like posing a question like, what if the farmer says something? Honestly, if a farmer tells you, 
If a local farmer, you go to a local farmer and you ask them to kind of see their operation without disturbing them too much, and they tell they turn you away, you, you just walk just walk away, just leave. You don't have to you don't have to patronize those those kind of people. And if they're willing if they're willing to turn away people like that, then they're probably rich or foolish or doing yeah, something wrong. Because <laughs> I know I know if somebody said, hey, you know, I want to go to your farm and see how your eggs or your chicken are. Let's go. Yeah, my farm will come out like you're an inspector. You know? Yeah. Check you out. Know, yeah. Like, no, I'd like to see how you do it. Just and how things work. And I'd yeah. like to learn about it. Ask consumer you know, type uh, questions. Yeah, Thank I mean, you very like, much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. No. Enjoy. No, 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 is if you give them silage and milk them right afterwards, the milk will have a funny taste to it. You know, for like the chopped up corn stalks and stuff like that. There's certain things that you don't feed them right before you milk them. There's a few little things like that they had. Oh, well, yeah, that's how it died because uh, when he was a baby, they were giving him milk from the guy that next door to my, um, my grandparents' house. And he, they lived in the city. And uh, they thought he was adding chalk to the milk so he did not get the proper nutrition. And so it isn't something they made up. They were still doing that. Around, uh, let's see, that would have been between 1906 and 1910. 1910. So they, they still did that stuff. I bet. Any other questions? I do, actually. Sure. Um, you brought up the fat content in raw whole milk, and you brought up the um, person with the seizure. I'm actually a nanny for a girl who has seizures. And we just put her on the low glycemic index diet, which involves about 60% of every meal, including snacks, to uh, be fats. So like 10% carbs and 30% protein, and then 60% fats. Is there a decent amount of fats in whole milk or cream? Yeah, uh, the, I'm not sure the ex I don't even, I might even have it on my notes. At this, at this point, we've actually, for some of her meals, have her drinking just straight um, heavy cream from a class, which I know sounds crazy, but that's like, that's actually suggested in the diet, but like I, I myself don't drink anything pasteurized. I, I don't even drink milk, but um, so I'm, I'm just very curious to know if that is a good substitute for getting the fat other kind of diet. Fats? Um, a lot of avocado, because there's a lot of fats in that. Um, she has cream cheese, uh, the cream, and... Stick of butter for lunch? <laughs> Stick of butter for lunch, no, but like when we do cook things, like we have to cook it in like a ton of oils. Like if I cook her like chicken, I have to cook it in like a pan with a lot of olive oil or something. And, or butter, trying to get the fat into her diet. So, any healthier way to do that? But your milk is only about, depending on the cow and the diet, four to six percent fat in the whole milk. So it's not, you know, it's not a high, high percentage. Yeah. When people buy skim milk or one or two percent milk. It's not that much fat to really cut it out. And of course, all the studies for the last twenty years have shown that that was a mistake. That is in fact fat is not related to heart disease, and that was a misinterpretation of the data many years ago. And people just can't seem to get over that. But, um, there's not that much of that in whole milk. What it, so it's about three point nine percent. But can you like can you buy? You mentioned buying cream at these dairies where you buy your milk, and so I'm assuming there's more fat in the cream. Sure. But so it's also it's it's also in the raw milk too. So the cream, if you bought cream separately, all they are doing is skimming off the top and putting it into a separate container. So it's still raw, like unpasteurized. Right? Yes, okay. but so if, so the milk that I just passed out, I'll either shook it and like if I let it sit in my fridge for a day, 
all I'd do is shake it before I use it because that cream will be in there. So you still get that fat content or whatever happens in the, with uh, the cream, whatever it is with the cream. So this is not homogenized either, huh? Nothing. Just straight from the... For it, unhomogenized, because you go up in the morning and the, you leave the milk uh, I'd def walk there and it would separate. She'd pour off the light cream and she'd pour off the heavy cream. If she had a recipe, she would never quiet it. She wouldn't have to go out and buy a special and use the skim milk and regular milk, you know? i definitely... Uh, do more research into it. I mean, if that's what the parent, maybe you mention it to the parents about maybe that's a possibility. Because like I said, I, I have read stories, so I'm sure if you if you Googled it, that people, that, like children that have had seizures and the family had started giving them raw milk, um, the the seizures started like lessening. And even, even, not even just the amount, but how bad they were when they were happening. Right. So. The whole purpose of the um, low glycemic index diet is the reason she has to have so much fat is because, like, minimal carbs, you're supposed to have, like, under 50 grams of carbs each day, and, like, two or three times that in fats, and that's because it, the less carbs you have, the more fats that you have, it convinces your brain that you're starving, and they've seen that some kids with seizures who have gone on this diet, um, the confusion that it causes their brain has slowed down their seizures and caused them to not be as frequent. Hmm. So, it's just something. Yeah. Something Does it seem yeah, like definitely. Healthy? She's only been on it for a couple of weeks, and we had to. We've been slowly putting her on it because she's a very picky <laughs> eater. She has cognitive delays, so she's she um she's 14, but has like the mentality of a small child. And you know they're very picky eaters. They don't like the vegetables, so like it's hard to ease her into something like this where it's such a strict diet. But she's she's it's hard for anybody to her. ease into the yeah. <laughs> diet. Like if you told me to drink cream, I'd be like, yeah, okay. But luckily, like I'm there all the time because she's more like mixing mm -hmm. things. For chocolate me. syrup in it? She doesn't like chocolate. Oh no! I know. <laughs> wow. She only likes it in the form of chocolate chips. Yeah. So yeah, I wonder if like not only the fat that's in the milk, but um, I mean there might be something with the rest of the the, pro the enzymes and stuff that I was talking about earlier. If those things would just help her like retain some of that stuff, like more fat. So you know your body's obviously wants to process it, but maybe if if those enzymes and different things help you retain a little bit more, maybe that might be a different effect than just overloading her with fats. You know what I mean? I, 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 would, I would definitely say look into it more, but it's definitely, like I said, I've heard of cases that people have. Okay. Interesting. Do you find that you drink more? We go through milk a lot. My, my boy is just drinking. <laughs> so, like, we go through maybe two cartons of milk a week. Wow. They drink. <laughs> two gallons, yeah. They they just drink it with everything. Two, eight and five. I'm scared for my teenage years. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I was saying, uh, with with the pasteurized milk, it kind of, you kind of lose some of the stuff that makes you think that you're full. Yeah. Well, they have the cereal in the morning, and then they want the milk with any cookies that they get, almost you know, for snacks. <laughs> Lunch, they drink it with dinner, so it's, it's yeah. Not too much though. You can get regular milk for cheap price. Yeah. If you want to, you know, if you get it for less than three bucks a gallon, right. you know, like Shaw's. But you just what what I would do, it like for my if my son drank that much milk. I mean, he drinks milk and he he loves milk, and sometimes I'll put chocolate. So he'll, but um, sometimes you're just gonna limit some things. Too much of anything is bad, and you think they. Our bodies want to be balanced. I mean, everybody, everybody's heard of the balanced diet. That's, that's what our body wants. So that's why I try to tell everybody anything. They're like, oh, I do this every single day. I'm like, okay, but you know too much of anything. It's like this new, there's like a diet thing where if you drink vinegar, apple cider vinegar every day, a certain amount, you start losing weight. So it's some, a lot of people are doing it and it works, but I'm like, just think about drinking apple cider vinegar every single day. It's gonna eventually, something bad's gonna happen because your body should not intake that much apple cider vinegar. 
I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think anything is, yeah. Well, a lot of people add it to like different juices and stuff like that to drink it. But it's like it's I think a shot. Too, so you have to take but. I think you could get the same benefit from a little glass of wine. I wouldn't drink wine. I wouldn't <laughs> drink apple cider. No, I don't. My, my wife drinks a lot of wine. <laughs> and then she started drinking a apple cider vinegar and she started losing weight. I think she lost like, no. She just stayed the same. She'd be a toothpick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if the wine worked. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't, don't, don't let her see that. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. Um, like, I chose to drink raw milk anyway. I didn't do it because there was necessary science behind it. I, I make a lot of my decisions kind of based, I mean, some of it's science-based, but stuff that I learn, and I just kind of use my common sense. So I think, um, all right, well, there's a, there's a process where you pasteurize it, and it kills every single thing. For me, in my mind, for one, if bacteria was to have to get in there, all it seems like is that's like a perfect breed. Like, I have no competition. Now I'm just going to get huge. So then you got... Whatever, if this is, if it happens to be a bad bacteria that gets in there, it's going to explode in this nice, pristine, sterile environment that has no competition for. That's why milk goes bad. Yeah. When it goes bad, it gets really repulsive. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so then I was like, you know, you think, well, people way before pasteurization, that's all they drank was raw, raw milk. So if there was, if raw milk was that bad for you, then none of us would be here. So, and, and then all the other stuff is just a positive. Like I said, I, this year I haven't really gotten sick. I had, didn't get allergies at all, which I had been, were, was getting for the last like four or five years of my life. Didn't get them at all this year. And, you know, I attribute that to maybe raw milk and the rest of my diet, but it, this, it, it just makes sense to me. So that's why I drink it. Anything else? Good. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we have some more workshops coming up. Uh, the next one is sourdough, bread. sourdough bread coming up next week. Learn how to make sourdough bread. Yeah, it might not be as boring as raw milk. No. Um, yeah, sourdough bread. We have uh, mushroom starting starting mushrooms coming up after that. Green cleaners. Clean, green cleaning products like I think deodorant and stuff like that, laundry detergent, which you already experienced, so you know it works. <laughs> no, oh, vinegar for so disinfectants and stuff like that, but you have to come to the workshop to find out more. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for all coming, everybody for coming. And